Hi folks, welcome back. It's another broker talk and I've got a fantastic agent here. He's committed to his community. He's from his community. Uh, uh, Kyle, um, Zane Moore. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Zane Moore? Zine. Z well, I was saying Z, but I, you know, I got You know, funny. a zine, like, like magazine? Yeah. Oh, zine. Zine yeah. Moore. Yeah. Full name. Full name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, Kyle is a, on the board of directors of the Greater Boston Association of Realtors. That is a uh, position of honor, but it's a position of great responsibility because you are absolutely involved in every aspect of uh, the real estate world here in the greater Boston area. And we're one of the biggest and most successful real estate organizations in the country. Uh, so Kyle, what uh, what made you possess you to run for the office? And what are some of the things that you've been doing for our community in the real estate business? To be completely honest with you. So um, it started with when you're, as you know, being a part of the association of realtors, one, you, 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 you join either, either due to the affiliation with a brokerage or whatnot, or, or needing resources. Um, but a part, a part of participating, um, in office and just, um, the volunteer, um, whether it's committees, things like that. A lot of times people are tapped on the shoulders. So I got to give credit to me being tapped on the shoulder by, um, uh, Melvin, Melvin Vieira, um, the former, um, immediate past president of GBAR. Um, so he tapped me on the shoulder. He reached out and was kind of saying, you know, he he was he was heading into his presidency and was looking for people that wanted to be involved, that wanted to get um, to be a part of it. Um, and, you know, people from the community that, that, that just wanted to do more. Um, right. So I seen he extended that olive branch. I reached out and responded. And um, that is what what put me in position to be on different committees. Um, and I, I want to say I went in, in that when him tapped me on the show, that probably joined maybe three or four committees he helped me get onto. Um, and then within doing that, um, I was able I had an interaction with um, Allison Socha, who is the current president. Um, and she actually um, asked me to be on the board as one of her appointees as she was going into her presidency. Allison is um, is our current president. Cool. And by the way, we talked about her earlier. I did get an email from her and she's been really busy with the uh, roadshow. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, she and her good friend, Jocelyn. Um, uh, yep, Jocelyn also, Asian? Yeah. Yep. And uh, they're going to come on the show in a couple of weeks and talk about what it's like to be a woman in leadership. And one of the questions I Jocelyn, oh, that'll be interesting. And I know Melvin was our first black president, mm -hmm. and you're not president yet, but uh, you're on the board. Talk yeah. a little bit about the diversity and uh, the communities that we serve here. Uh, well, the, the diversity is large. I mean, the, the the Greater Boston Association of Realtors, the territory that it covers, is is very vast. I mean, it goes down to as far as Stoughton on the South Shore. It goes as far as north as, um, you know, we, we cover up towards Melrose, things like that, and, and upwards of it. So, I mean, the, the territory is vast. Um, the um, amount of people in it, the 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 ethnicity groups in there, are it's, it's a diaspora of people. Um, and I mean that from price points to, right. to um, you know, to like I said, the, the the amount of people there just in different, uh, different communities. So the... The I don't even know how the, the best way to describe it. It's it's probably a a, a melting pot. It's a, it's a good depiction of America, the the territory sure. that the Greater Boston sure. Association of Realtors kind of uh, covers because where there's so many people, you have people from the inner city, people from the suburbs, um, right? Yeah, black, white, Hispanic, um, just many different um races and ethnicities that kind of come together to create the communities that we see. Right, and the Greater Boston Association is part of the mass. Association of Realtors, which right. is part of the National Association of Realtors. And um, all of these people, it's the first um, trade association to actually uh, um, police itself, because mm -hmm. back before this was a profession, anybody would do it. And by the way, a lot of people think they can do it <laughs> for yeah. sale by owners and, you know, your Uncle Jack and, uh, uh, you know, um, 
So, uh, but there, there are rules and regulations and laws, and it's a very complex selling a piece of property is complex and, uh, plumbing, electrical, uh, zoning, um, building codes. Uh, and then when it gets down to it, the emotional, he, he need to be an emotional support dog for some of your clients. <laughs> that a therapist, I mean, it goes into a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not that I think of myself as an emotional support dog, but, uh, <laughs> Hey, sometimes you have to just play the role to, uh, to make sure that you, you deliver the service you say you're going to do. Exactly. Exactly. And it's a, it's a big, big item for, for people making a purchase like this or selling, you know, sure. um, <clears throat> um, talk to me. I, I, I know you also run a property management firm. Yes. So property management is a whole different thing than real estate. And it's not always quite often I'm a property manager as well. Um, but it's a right brain, left brain thing because property management is really service to the tenants and, and, um, paying attention to what's going on with the physical property, you know, are the systems working correctly? Is it clean? Is it, uh, being, uh, taken care of in that way? Yes. And so, um, one of the things that's going on in in our country is everybody's so mad and angry and you know the pandemic kind of made a lot of people uh even a little more aggressive in that way and politically we're we're kind of all over the place um have you had any trouble with um tenants <clears throat> related to any of that kind of stuff like mental illness or something like that now i know that we it's a protected uh group yep. so you know we're not we're not saying hey don't come in but sometimes people need help and sure. uh if you're the property manager sometimes you're that person for sure i mean and yeah in full transparency uh, a few of the properties one of the buildings that we run uh actually is a rooming house so um yes we we have a few in, uh, individuals in there that have dealt with mental health issues and uh, we've had to help them whether it be um you know, dealing with um, altercations at the building, dealing with, um, you know, having to to reach out to authorities and things like that to try to calm situations down. Um, Just, you know, working with them um, in a different capacity to try to help them um, and slow things down and explain and explain to them the situation that, you know, what they're in, just kind of how things are moving um, and how we can help them move forward. Um, right. But yeah, we, we've dealt with it a lot. Um, and even in some of like our regular, uh, regular units as well. Um, I mean, mental health is just a thing that we deal with as humans. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to see it a lot, especially because just being a property manager, you're coming across and interacting with a lot of people, um, some in an intimate level and some not so much. Um, it just kind of depends on, um, you know, I don't want to say how needy, but how, um, how hands-on you have to be with that specific unit. Right. Right. Well, uh, the properties that I manage uh, are generally come from investors that I work with who buy the property and then I manage it. And one of uh, uh, I've always said, buy a good property. (laughs) There's less to do. (laughs) Buy a property that the the uh, heating systems, the cooling systems, the plumbing, the electric is all in good shape and then get good and then get good tenants. Yeah. Uh, uh, There it's such a. tenant forward place around here they're very very protected in the boston area oh for sure one thousand percent what what about uh michelle wu our our current and new mayor has put forward a uh uh a proposal to put to bring back um um the uh, rent control rent control i'm sorry yeah a little bit of brain fart there uh rent control now that's never worked anywhere uh but i understand the principle we need Mm -hmm. affordable housing and it just is hard to exist here people come from anywhere and they say what it's going to be four thousand for a three-bedroom uh Mm -hmm. rental oh my gosh and i have to pay the commission you know, and you say, well, yes, yeah, <laughs> because it's a, a Boston market. Mm-hmm. But the downside of of that, it's it, it, it's very, very good for the consumer if rents are capped 
and you can only go up a certain period of time. That's control of 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 restraint of trade. I think people um, talk about. But um, what happens if people who build these new apartments and and uh, are developers, yeah. and if they can't see a profit in it, they're not going to do it. Yeah. They're not going to do it. We're not going to have new properties. You know, you kill, the, you, you kill basically the the free enterprise of 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 being in business and buying in real estate, and and the restraint of that trade. Now, uh, there's some who very very strongly believe that that we should do that. We should restrict what what people make in in this field, and yet in almost no other field do they do that. I mean. Uh, everybody uh, it's time it, when it's time for a payday everybody wants a little more of course uh, um, i'm just curious to see i don't i don't i i mean i know that they're, they're definitely pushing to try to make it happen i'm just curious because i guess as, as we said it, it'll kill free enterprise but in the grand scheme of things surely when you buy it when you purchase a multifamily or an investment uh, investment property you're buying a business yeah and the valuation of that business is predicated on the income that is generated. If right. I spend X amount of dollars, it's because this, right. been, this business is generating Y in terms yeah. of a return, and I can expect this um, in, in you know X amount of time. So if you put a cap on that, then you essentially, you, you, you're now just killing the value of these buildings. Why are these buildings? I mean, we're, we're talking $1.3 million for a three family. You know what I mean? Why are these buildings $1.3 million? Well, it's because it's probably generating you somewhere around 60, 70, $80,000 a year in rental income. Um, and, 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 and you got to know exactly what, you know, what kind of what makes it make sense. I think when you start to get into, to add in these caps, it also is going to kill the value of a lot of these buildings. Yeah. 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 And, and hence uh, investors and developers will walk away and put their money elsewhere yeah. where they can make more money because that, that is uh, the capitalist system. Yeah. Um, so it, it, the, uh, the mayor is for it. The city council um, they're in the city and they're listening to their constituents and constituents are saying, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. But then it has to go to the state. And I guarantee you the state, uh, that is not Boston centric. I mean, mm -hmm. we're a big state. Uh, they won't want to have anything to do with this, I'm sure. And it'll get shuffled and shuffled. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the way politics is done is by doing nothing. Um, and I think that's probably what's going to happen with this. It does not answer the question about need for affordable housing. I think that's a zoning issue. Uh, and zoning is local. Uh, I, think I remember hearing you saying that on an episode before. That is definitely a zoning issue. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, you know, no. It, it, say for instance, um, I've got a property. I've got a, a little over a third of an acre. Okay, that's not a lot of property, but uh, um, I'm old enough where my parents have, have passed on. But what if my mother was still alive? Why couldn't I put a tiny house? You know right on my property she wants she wants to be independent and all of that but you can't do it you yeah. just can't do it because of zoning and um that bothers me a little bit you know uh yeah no um, i just disagree with you there because even you know the opportunities where we could do you know just some of the creative things i mean obviously part of it plays into climate and building materials and things like that but you see opportunities for tiny homes in different markets, the the uh the the box container homes that you know some of the things that seem like they would be good ideas if done right seem to be so much far fetched because of the like you said zoning and laws that we we're just right. not able to take advantage of. Right, and and some of the laws just don't make any sense. I uh my wife is a fine arts painter. And when we bought this property, um, we bought it because it had an oversized two-car garage. Well, you know, we're New England cars. We don't care. You know, <laughs> snow yeah. doesn't bother us. We converted that into her painting studio. So yeah. we had to put electric was already in there, but we had to put heat in there. They mm -hmm. would not let us put a bathroom in there because if it had a bathroom there, then uh, somebody could live in it. And because uh, it had electric heat and and, and wa running and wa water, plumbing, yeah, plumbing. That's um, what it is. You know, it's I don't know. Um, 
We do. We are a nation of laws, and uh, we have a code of ethics that we work by, um, and you have to stay within the lines. For sure. So, uh, but you have to know what the lines are, and sure. and that takes study. So let's talk about your origin story. You you grew up in Boston. Yes, um, born and raised in uh, well, born in Roxbury, and then moved and raised. Eventually, lived in Dorchester. Okay. Where in Dorchester? Dorchester's become a really hot town, a I'm hot in, area. Uh -huh. Bloom's Corner on the Columbia Road, Dorchester. I mean, Columbia Road, Dudley Street area. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I know that. I usually know all these areas. It's another thing that real estate agents do. It's like we drive around a lot. Yeah. Uh, for me, I like to find the, the best sandwich places. In a, every little town, every little area has their best sandwich spot. I like to. I like to find those. Uh, okay. So, one of these days we might have to go get a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I can name places, <laughs> and because oh. uh, you know, you can't see it, but I have a very happy Buddha belly. Uh, <laughs> I think we both do. <laughs> um. So, what is your uh real estate business like? Do you do rentals? Do you do uh sales? W what's your clientele like? Yes. So um, I do a bit of everything, to be completely honest with you, with having the property management. Um, we have 70 units that we manage throughout the city. Um, so, you know, I can't really get away from the rentals there, but primarily the bulk of my business. So what I try to focus on um, at this point in my career is sellers and uh, buyers. I mean, more so sellers yeah. than buyers, yeah. um, because, you know, it's just kind of the natural progression. I'm running a brokerage. I'm running a team. I'm kind of sort of trying to act as the rainmaker and, and, and sure. sort of that, the, the, the running the longevity play. Um, however, um, you know, obviously the buyers come in, we're still prospecting, taking in buyers. So we work with them. Um, uh, but that's the majority of it is buyers and sellers at this point. I'm trying to, um, I, I do a lot with investors. So now it's trying to get more into the developments right. and new developments. One, because we're seeing a lot of underbuilding happening and things like that, but just trying to create different opportunities for myself and my team. What are some of the habits that make you successful? Everybody has kind of things they do. They talk about time blocking and all that kind of stuff. But what are some of the things that you do? Um, a time block, uh, you know, time blocking doesn't necessarily always work. It's Right. Task management. Task management helps because it's not necessarily about time blocking. You can time block, but if you don't get anything done in the time that's allotted, what did you actually spend that time doing? Yeah. So task management has helped. Um, one of the biggest things for me is coaching. Um, I spend yeah. a lot of money and invest a lot of money and time into coaching. Um, one, because, you know, in this industry, you're being coached. You're yeah, you are. Right. Getting, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. OK. Yes. I mean, yeah. I coach my team and things like that, but I have a coach that I that I invest money in and invest yeah. my time in and things like that. And it's just because being in this, <clears throat> excuse me, being in this industry, I'm sure you're aware is there's no manual. Nobody really sits you down and shows you kind of how to be a good agent, how to really um, generate business, how to do it, you know, in, in a in a in a tasteful manner. Um, there's no there's no rule book to it. So. For me, one of the biggest things for me is investing in coaching and and being around people that have already done it, done it at a high level. Um, so I don't have to spend time recreating the wheel. Well, um, I'm just going to push back. There, there is in fact a thousand books about how to do it, and everybody tells you how they did it, not yes. how it's best for you. I True. mean. You know, um, uh, Gary Keller has a book out. Uh, just about every I've, I've read that one, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. I've yeah. read, I've read them all. Yeah. And you're right. And a lot of times, honestly, the information in is is it the information in it is the same. A lot of it doesn't change. It's a lot of the same right. stuff. It's the application. It's maybe you hear it phrased a different way. Um, but also the other part right. of that is the accountability. Um, you got to remain consistent. So part in that, I guess you're right. But part in that, me saying coaching is the the accountability that comes with coaching because you also yeah. you have a broker, but you don't necessarily have a boss. And with me being the broker of my office, I kind of am the end all be all. Not that I wanted to sure. be that. So sure. I always need somebody that's pushing me. My team is pushing me. Um, and that's an, a, a benefit that I think that's helped is I've created an environment where it's iron shopping's iron. So if I'm slacking, my team will call me out on my stuff just as they know I'm going to call them out on theirs. Uh I, I've been married a long time and I used to come home and say, uh, I just talked to this prospect and I just showed this house. And now my wife of 34, 35 years said, 
do you have anything under agreement? <laughs> When's <laughs> your next closing? No. She just gets <laughs> just, stay to the, stay to the, the yeah, I don't want to hear the top of the funnel. Give me the funnel part. Yeah, no, she wants the lagging indicators. What's the yeah, offer? Right. What's under agreement? What's right, under board? Right. What you got coming up? No, that's good. <laughs> Don't give me your gross commission. Give me your net commission. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's good. And 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 I'm sure that, you know, in that, you know, it's 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 fun to say, hey, I spoke to this prospect, but when you got somebody that you care about and that cares about you, that's asking, all right, right but what about the stuff that matters? What about right. the things that you said that you want to do or that are plans and things like that? That's what helps um helps you know keep the consistency. Exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, when I come home at the end of the day, I'll be asked, well, how was your day? Well, you know, there are 73 things that happened that day. Some were outrageous, some were funny, some were horrible, someone, you know, yeah. uh, where do you even start with something like that? Most times I'll just say it was a day. <laughs> it was a day. It was a day. Sometimes I actually have, you know, pretty incredible stories like walking into a room and you know everybody's naked like oh you didn't know i was coming <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, that is an interesting story <laughs> yeah. uh it, it was a great story i'll tell you one more off the air it, it was pretty pretty funny um but um scripts are another thing that all agents are told they have to memorize mm -hmm. and there's nothing worse than getting a phone call and we all get them and the first thing they says hi i'm blah 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 from blah 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 how are you today you know yeah. like that's somehow gonna you know oh i'm fine thanks so much you really care about me right yeah. you know <laughs> no it, i mean don't get me wrong i i am i am big on scripts with my team but it's more of a uh a roadmap kind of like a, just a guide for the conversation. So that way you sure. know what to say, but yeah. I'm also very, very big on providing value. You're not calling, yeah. don't call to follow up with somebody. Don't just call to check in or touch base, call to provide value, call with exactly. actually some sort of information that makes sense. And then your scripting and everything like that will come into play. And as you, as you tie it in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I think we're along the same lines there in terms of like, I'm I'm big on scripting because when you don't know where to start, it's a good place to start, but that's not the only way to do it. Right, right. And there's all kinds of script cards and all yeah. that kind of thing where you can sit and you can, you can be comfortable with it. But uh, one of the important things of being a real estate agent is you have to be comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. 1,000%. Money is an uncomfortable conversation. Uh, why haven't we had more people through? Why isn't this selling? You know, what do you mean they they want to take money off because we have a hole in the roof? It's a good hole. You can or, see or, the sky. I know, right? You can see the sky. <laughs> Hit at the right lights. It's, it's a skylight. Just put a piece of glass there. <laughs> Not, but also even down to having to tell having to tell a buyer that you know, especially in this previous market that we've been in and similar today but like having to tell a buyer that they didn't get the home that they wanted that you know yeah. this is the this is the this is the fifth offer that they put in they literally put in everything that they had and it still wasn't enough yeah. you still have that conversation and 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 be able to try to keep them motivated to, to, to do it all again on the next one and you might get it yeah yeah well uh, the, the history uh, my history is if you're focused, you're going to get it. If you're looking everywhere to yeah. try and get everything, you're never going to get it because you're not focused enough. People sure. really kind of narrow it down. I want this kind of a house. It has to have this. I don't care about that. You know, uh, you find people who say, I never want to live in a colonial house. There's too many colonials. And then all of a sudden they, you find they, they buy a colonial. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And they love it. That is just miseducation. I mean, you know, assumptions and 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 tradition from what we've grown up and experiences. But which, I mean, part of it, you got to sit down and just actually have conversations with people and see what are their preconceived notions, yeah. what are they, what is what is their experience, what are their their expectations and their goals. Yeah, yeah. So I I have uh, long believed because uh, real estate agents, I talk to them every week. Uh, um, I happen to enjoy real estate agents. Most of them, um, that, not, uh, all of, not all of uh, us are that cool. No, no, they're not. Some, some just like everything. There are some crooks. There are some underhanded people. There's some people that, uh, but there's so many nice people, so many yes. good people. Yes. Um, 
I always think that good agents always have some kind of a secret sauce that's special to them. What's your secret sauce, Kyle? Um, honestly, if I had to say it, it's probably just that I, I try to connect. I try mm -hmm. to be present. Um, it's not that I'm, I'm able to do a lot or I am, but it's as a result of the people that I have around me. And, and part of that is because I'm able to connect with people. I'm a true right. people person. Um, I am interested in learning more about people and just even, you know, the conversation that we had earlier and before and things like that. Like, it's really just when I, when I interact with people, I interact to connect. So I think that might yeah. be my secret sauce is because I'm not, I'm truly not transaction. I really want to connect with people. I want to learn yeah. more. I want to try to, uh, yeah um see how what value i can add and, and just kind of what value i can bring to, to other people to to give back well uh, i want to say the exact same thing that you just said in a slightly different way it's not just that you connect is you truly are a community resource you know you grew up and and maybe you don't realize that's your secret sauce but uh you know so many of the streets and you know so many of the people and you've been around for for your whole life that that is kind of its own secret sauce. And if you connect with people, I mean, you said you like you like people, but frankly, from my uh, experience with people, um, uh, real estate is the place where you're you're going to learn not to like people <laughs> because they're yeah. going to reveal themselves to you in an unfriendly way. That is know, true. Because, yeah, but uh, but in spite of that, uh, you know, most of the time when people are yelling at you, they're not yelling at you. They're yelling at the situation. You just happen to be in the way. Yeah, uh, it's, it's shoot the messenger. And you yeah, like you said, you're the messenger at that moment. Right, right. And, you know, being in real estate, I've learned, you know, we, we got to learn to take on tough skin, part of having those hard conversations. Um, but part of I think that's part of my my, my like you said, the, the sauce is. And connecting, um, if you do it properly, a lot of times, like you said, even even the client is able to realize that they're not upset with you or even the messenger. It's just the message. And now we got to try to figure out how to find a way around it or fix it. it yeah, it, it, it's true. How will people get in touch with you? Um, they see you here. They want to they want to work with you. How do people get in touch with you, Kyle? Um, so you can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram. Um, my Instagram name is at I Hustle Houses. Um, on my website, you can go to kylezine.com, um, K Y L E Z E N E.com. Um, and yeah, my, my brokerage is Xander Realty Group. Uh, you can find me anywhere there. If you Google any of those or search my name, you'll definitely find me. Yeah. Uh, uh that's great. So, um, uh, when people connect with you, uh, how do you like it best? Cause there's so many different ways to connect now, telephone, text, um, a voice, video uh facebook uh twitter you know <laughs> to be i know i always to... called you and yeah, you're one of the... that... sorry go ahead I, and and you're one of the people that answers your phone i yeah. call how many answer you know people don't answer their phone what are you doing <laughs> i mean but that's in full transparency that's how i got my start was one of the things i used to always say to me when i was a new agent is just answer your phone you'll you'll do better than some of the other agents out here and Lo and absolutely behold, true and I, I got business i got people hey i want to see this yeah. house my realtor's not answering can you show me this and sure so i've just made a habit of answering my phone it's just i'm paying the bill and it's how i make money so yeah keep answering yeah. that's how i got my first client too i answered the phone and i've answered the phone every time even yeah. when i you know we get so many calls because our our names our emails our phone numbers are out there in the public so um Everybody who has something to sell wants to call us. Same. Yeah. No, so, and, but I mean, in terms of my preference, I mean, it probably the call or text. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so accessible in so many different ways. And I try to make myself accessible that it's not really that I have a preference. I think if you want to get to me the quickest or probably get the quickest response is probably going to be to call or text me. Yeah. Um, because, you know, my, my day to day, as you know, our day to days as agents is, is, is completely haywire, but mine as a broker, um, you know, I could plan to, you know, be doing one thing. And next thing, you know, I'm putting out fires and sitting and yeah. listing presentations yeah. and helping somebody else with their book of business for yeah. the entirety of the day. Um, so it's all over the place, but the quickest way is probably give me a phone call or show me a text message. And as soon as I can, I'll definitely get back to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Kyle Zine Moore. 
Uh, it, it's such a pleasure to have you. And thank you so much for your service to our community. And I look forward to having you back on the show uh, sometime soon. Larry, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, and, and thank you. I look forward to being a part of this again as well and, and helping you uh, grow this. Truly appreciate it, Kyle. Uh, thanks again. And uh, tune in next week. Uh, we'll have another fabulous guest for you uh, who shares their ideas, their thoughts, and everything about the real estate business.